Hello everyone, it's Saturday here in Taiwan, so it's time to look at another dinosaur tooth from my collection. This one you can see now. It's nice and chunky, measuring 1.33 inches, but it is a bit battered. It's possibly Afro Veneta, but I can't be 100% certain, but I will come to that later. Now this tooth was found in the Tioraran formation of Niger. As you can see, it isn't in the best condition. This is actually pretty common for teeth from this formation. They often come out of the ground fractured and cracked and slightly deformed, held together by the very tough matrix. You can see the deep cracks and damage on all sides of this tooth. So on the distal side, you can see that serrations are still visible, although a little bit worn in places. Yet, if we look at the mesial side, they are worn, completely worn, so you can't see them anymore. And this is why I can't be 100% certain that this tooth is from Afro Veneta. This table here shows the information needed to correctly identify a theropod tooth. So the measurements that we need are crown height, crown base length, and crown base width. Once you have your measurements, you then need to work out the crown base ratio and the crown height ratio, shown here. Crown base ratio is basically the width of the base divided by the length of the base. Crown height ratio is the height of the crown divided by the length of the base. So pretty simple. Then we also need a serration count, the number of denticles at its midpoint in a 5mm span on both the distal and mesial sides. Distal being the rear of the tooth, mesial being the front of the tooth. Also important is how far down the mesial denticles extend. Sometimes they don't extend to the base of the tooth. The mesial side is key, but unfortunately they are sadly missing from this tooth. Another stumbling block is locality. Different formations can be from entirely different time periods, separated by millions of years. And yet, they can still be relatively close to each other, or even overlap. We will look at this map here. The Tioraran formation is part of the Urhaza group. I have now highlighted it in red. This formation dates from the middle Jurassic, but just to the south of it lies the Tagama group, now highlighted in blue, dating from the early Cretaceous and with an entirely different group of dinosaur species. So it's entirely possible, given the close proximity of the two formations, that mistakes could be made while collecting in identifying where exactly the tooth was found. Tioraran. In addition, it's been said that the newer Tioraran formation teeth, the newer teeth on the market, could be from a different dig site than the older ones on the market. So there could be confusion as to the geological age of the new dig site. We've also seen this with Atlas Mountain teeth in Morocco, with dig sites claimed to be Jurassic when they are actually Cretaceous sites, similar in age to the Chemchem -chem beds and featuring the same dinosaurs as the Chemchem -chem beds. So when buying a tooth online, it's very important to get as much information on the locality as possible, the county or even the town. So that's why I can't 100% say for sure what this tooth comes from. Now assuming the formation is 100% correct and verified, can't I just take a look at the species there? Well, at the Tioraran formation, the only large theropod described is the megalosaurid Afroveneta. So you could say, must be that. But unfortunately, there's always a possibility, indeed, very likely, that there are other theropods found there that haven't been described yet. New species are discovered all the time. In 2021, two new Baryonychini species were described from the Isle of Wight, Ceratosuchops and Riparoveneta. So Afroveneta is likely, but it's by no means a certainty. So the tooth should correctly be labelled as 
unknown theropod or unidentified theropod. Well, let's take a look as if it was Afro-Veneta. Its name means African hunter. A megalosaurid, it is the cousin of the famous Megalosaurus, one of three species which Richard Owen used to define dinosaurs. It is also related, a bit more distantly, to Spinosaurus, and as such, to Suchomimus, which we looked at last time. This 2019 study classifies Megalosauridae as Carnosauria, which as you can see, includes Spinosauridae. The true size of Afroveneta is disputed. The holotype skeleton, which was a partial and is the only skeleton found, was estimated to be around 8 metres long and weigh about 1 tonne. A 2016 study put its size at a lower 6.8 metres long. Paul Sereno, who described it, said its general build was gracile, with relatively long forelimbs and lower legs. This made it lightweight and fleet of foot. Its skull was relatively flat, though, as shown here, not as flat as that of its cousin, Eustreptospondylus. The maxilla contained 14 teeth, which were long and blade-shaped, designed for shredding flesh. Unlike Suchomimus, which was predominantly a fish-eater, Afro-Venator would have fed mainly on other dinosaurs. As far as we know, the alpha predator of its area. However, there is some evidence for scavenging However, there is some evidence for scavenging in some megalosaurid species. This comes from fossil tracks in coastal areas which were left when the tides had receded, giving evidence that some megalosaurids went to those areas to scavenge marine reptiles and other species which had been left behind by the tides. So now let's look at where it lived. Its fossils were found in the Chioraran Formation of Niger, which is located near Agadez, circled here. During the Jurassic, it would have been rather an unpleasant place, a swampy environment with seasonal flooding. Gribed dinosaurs from there are the large sauropods Jobaria and Spinophorosaurus, and a small ceratosaurian called Spinostrophaeus. Also found has been a tooth from an unidentified spinosaurid. That tooth has denticles, so it could be a relation to the Suchomimus. Also found are bones and scoots from a Thyreophoran, which includes ankylosaurs and stegosaurs. There are likely many more dinosaurs waiting to be discovered in the Chiraran formation. Now pricing. The price of these teeth varies depending on condition and size. This was an eBay purchase, so it was a little cheaper than the norm. But from online sellers, you're looking at anywhere from $200 to $500 for the average tooth, with some specimens in better condition or being larger size costing more. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel and click like. I will do a new dinosaur fossil every Saturday. Thanks very much and take care everyone.